What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you how to change the front fork oil on this 2007 Yamaha FZ6. Now the service manual doesn't have a recommended interval for changing the fork oil, but if you've got leakage, you definitely need to change not only the fork oil, but also the seals that sit in here. I'm not going to be doing the seals in this video, but I will be talking about how the process gets done because I've done that before as well. I've also done the fork oil service before, about four years ago, so it'll be interesting to see how dirty the fork oil comes out. Uh, just a little bit as a point of reference for you out there, if you've never done it or done it somewhat recently, it'll give you an idea of what kind of interval you should do it on. And that was about 25, 30,000 kilometers ago. This job is a lot of small things. A lot has to come apart to get to the forks. The forks have to come out of the bike because you can't drain them while they're in the bike. So unfortunately you have to flip the fork upside down, which means taking it out of the bike. So front brakes, front wheels gotta come off, the front fairing, and then you undo it from the triple clamps, slide the fork out, under the top cap that seals in the fork oil and everything inside, dump it out and I'll show you how we fill it and measure it and ensure it's at the right level. But before we get into that, please smash like and subscribe button down below, it really helps me out. Now let's go! One of the first things to consider is how you're going to get this cap nut off. It's a 24 millimeter or a 15 16 so there's two ways you can go about it. It's generally best to try and undo it when the fork is in the triple clamp because that way you have something to hold the fork while you try and spin this nut. If you try and do it on the ground or with the fork out of the bike, you'll definitely need an impact driver or many people with strong grip. But if you don't have a 24 millimeter, uh, you can use an adjustable crescent wrench and a hammer. I have had success doing this. Just be very, very careful because I'm pretty sure this nut is aluminum and therefore very soft. So it can be done with an adjustable crescent and a hammer. If you're going to do it the socket way, you might have to tilt the handlebars out of the way to get a straight line down on this with your socket and impact or with your socket and wrench. There you go. A couple swift hits. Make sure you've got good engagement on the nut and you'll be all right. To get my front end in the air, I put my top case on and filled it with a bunch of fluid, basically pushing down on the rear wheel, if not the front. Gonna leave it like that. Now with the two Allen head triple bolt clamps loosened, you should be able to slide them out. Pull down, yeah. Wiggle, wiggle. One. Ta-da, that's the left leg. Now you have spaceship. So now you got your fork off. You should have already cracked your top nut, so just Loosen it off by hand. It's got an O-ring on it to seal it in, obviously. It might pop up just a little bit when you open it because there is a spring in here. We're just gonna put that aside for now. Take this out, because it's just in our way. All right, the oil is coming out actually really clear. It went in a bluish green, and it's still a bluish green. It's clear, I don't see, whoa, a bunch of particulate in there. I forgot about the spring that's in there. I'm just gonna keep a finger here so it doesn't fall out. Now to get all the oil out, you have to compress the fork and extend it. Don't slam it around. You wouldn't want to bottom out the fork if you were riding it. You don't want to hit it hard by hand either. Take the wash out, sits on top of the spring. This shaft sits on top of the washer. The, the washer basically interfaces between the spring and this collar here. Okay top cap on lightly, set that one aside and do the next one. Top cap, spacer thing, washer, check it out this time, don't be a doofus. I think we're good. Before you put anything back together, you want to clean it. Uh, we're going to leave uh, these parts out, like the, the large shim, the washer, uh, out so that we can fill the tube more easily. But now's a good time to just, you know, clean off the tubes, make sure there's nothing sitting on the legs, uh, check for any imperfections, uh, and then we can put stuff back together. 
Well, I'm gonna clean and then I'll show you how we fill. All right, so now to fill the oil. Yamaha recommends uh, 01 oil from Yamaha or equivalent. It's basically equivalent to a five weight oil. The guy at the parts counter basically said that the Yamaha 01 oil is a thin five weight, basically meaning that's on the thinner side of five. Although this is slightly on the higher side of five, uh, it'll be fine. Some people even say they put in a seven and a half weight or a 10 weight even to stiffen up the front end if you're a rather larger rider or I don't know, you want more stability in that regard. It's not for me, it's not what I'm gonna be doing today. Do your own research about that, but five weight is basically what's recommended. The manual recommends putting in basically 467 milliliters or cubic centimeters or 15.79 US ounces. Also, they give you a way of measuring the level. So it's supposed to be 134 millimeters from the top. And yeah, we basically, I'm gonna fill it just shy of this amount so that we have a little more to add and then measure it to make sure we're spot on. And then you repeat that in the second leg and you're good to go. Okay, so I got my fork here. We're gonna fill it. I've got my Bell Ray oil, I've got my measuring cup. Sorry, mom, don't worry, I'll clean it. Uh, and you also have to have the spring out. The spring obviously would take up some oil space and some volume, so we're gonna remove the spring. Of course, when you do this job, you want to be clean. You can't have, you can't have a bunch of debris and stuff get into your fork, uh, or else all that debris and stuff is gonna move through your damper and cause more problems in the future, or scar up your stanchions, or cause your oil seals to leak, bunch of things. So, uh, now that we're all clean, I'm just gonna lift up the fork so it's more visible. I'm gonna tape it to my desk so it doesn't fall away. And now we're gonna measure it up. I'm gonna start off by putting in about 450 mil, basically 15 mil shy of what I need to put in. Uh, and then I'll top it up and measure it. Basically I'll approach it slowly. 250, I'm gonna go up to about another 200 on here. You're supposed to cycle the fork up and down so that the oil disperses in the damper. All right, we just caught it. It's on the end of my ruler here. So your measurement for 134 millimeters or 5.28 inches is done when the stanchion is pushed all the way down. Just, you know, lightly, not hard. Uh, it's vertical, get in there. And you basically just dip it until you touch it. Uh, that's where I should be hitting oil, but I'm not because I'm probably just 15 mil shy. But when I go a quarter inch further, I touch it. So I'm gonna add a little bit more, just like I said I would. All right, before we go installing the parts, I'm gonna clean everything. You also notice when you take out the spring, there's two different ends. There's the open end and the coil bound looking end. The coil bind end is at the top. So it's really important you don't get dirt inside your fork. Like I mentioned, all of that will run through your damper, wreck your damper, run through your seals. It's a problem. You don't wanna do this job again, trust me. Put your spring in, coil bind at the top. the curved edge of the washer facing down. Pull it up a little more, put in our spacer, pull up a little more. And now it's a little tricky to get your top cap in because the, the spacer here uh, protrudes past the threads. So that just means you're preloading the spring a little bit when you put in the cap. So it's push, kind of just push down and turn and you'll feel it bite. There you go, and that's that. We'll repeat on the second one, we're good to go. If you want to disassemble the whole fork to change the seals in here, both the dust and oil, you have to take out the upper from the lower. And to do that, you have to get down inside a hole here. See down in there, there's a little Allen key. I think it's a six or an eight mil. Can't remember, but that Allen key threads into a damper rod, which runs the most of the length of this shaft. And Yamaha tells you there's some special T-handle tool you have to put in there, but really it's just a long extension. Now, I know you're gonna kill me, but it's either a half inch or three eighths, pretty sure it's a half inch, and you just stack a bunch of half inch extensions all the way till it wedges down at the bottom. Their tool's no different, that's all it literally is. So you get your wrench, a bunch of half inch extensions, jam it down to the bottom, you can't mess it up. You literally just find the place where it stops, wedge it in there, have one hand here, and it helps to maybe have an impact or something so you, or a second friend, someone to hold the handle while you loosen this. It is Loctited from the factory, so keep that in mind. It is gonna be tight. 
and then bust it loose. Once you take this Allen key all the way out, it releases the damper rod from being attached to the lower. You can pull this right out. As you're pulling this out, there's a washer that's beneath the oil seal. And essentially when you're pulling it out, it'll feel like it all of a sudden just stops. You go, and that's how you pull out the seal. You put this in a vise, basically on like the brake tab or something, and you just whack this out. It's like using a slide hammer, exactly. You just whack, 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 and eventually it'll, that washer that's behind the oil seal will pull everything out with it, and that's how you get it all out. There also is a circlip to look out for. It's under the dust seal and on top of the oil seal to keep the oil seal in place. Putting everything back together is a little more tricky and requires some finesse because I've messed it up once before. The hard part is the seal driver here. It's hard to replace, but you could go to a home hardware or something like that and get yourself some perfectly sized PVC pipe that fits around the silver stanchion here because it needs to have a tight fit around the stanchion but not be too wide that it can't go into the lower. So it has to be like a thin walled PVC thing. Maybe use a heat gun and shape it up or just drop the cash on Yamaha and buy this tool because you have to hammer in the oil seal because it's a tight fit to the lower and it's a tight fit to the inner so that it seals everything. Duh. So I've used pipes and stuff before and it worked. You just have to be really careful about when you're installing it that you don't mash up the seal or else it'll leak. And I know from experience. Once you push the seal in, you put the circlip in and then you put the dust seal on on top of that measure the fork oil like we're going to now, and you're good. Before you go installing your newly lubed up forks, it's a good idea to clean up these triple clamps before you go shoving your forks through them. So clean it, now let's put them in. All right, now I'm gonna leave the upper and lower triple clamp just loose, or this one's just nick tight to hold the tube in place, but I'm gonna leave them not tightened up yet so that I can adjust the height of them so that they're even on both sides when the front wheel is in. Gonna put the front wheel in, the fairing, the brakes, all of that. It's gonna go back onto the bike, tighten all that up, and make sure it all lines up, and then I'll tighten up the top end. And I'll go over all the torque specs in a moment. Torque spec for the pinch bolt here and down there at the lower crown is 22 foot pounds. Before you go torquing them up, you wanna first make sure that this tube is at the right height. You see we have just a hair of metal sticking out there. Gonna go around to the other side. I haven't torqued down the caps yet. That's why you see it sticking out there. About the same. Well, that's a wrap on the front fork oil replacement on this 2007 Yamaha FZ6. Hope this video helped you out. So from my own experience of having replaced this oil about four years ago and seeing the condition of it now, it was basically fine. I'd say it was maybe only a little bit darker than it went in at. If you're wondering when you should replace this, it's probably something you could do safely every like five or six years. And by now, if your bike's 12 or 13 years old and it's never had it, it's probably a good time to do it. My bike has 65,000 kilometers on it. I ride it in the rain, in the dry, in dusty conditions, on back roads, everywhere. So I don't exactly treat this bike nicely. I drive it in all weather conditions, so take that into consideration. But my dust seals and oil seals don't leak, and the, the forks have been in good health for the last four years, so that just goes to show how well they're sealed. As with any job that interferes with a crucial component of your bike, like the steering, just like on this job, Good idea to take it around the block and make sure it's all right and not steering wonky or anything's loose that you forgot about before you hit the highway. So take it for a test ride before you go for a rip. Thanks for watching everybody. Please smash the like and subscribe button down below. It really helps me out. And as always, have a good day.